Hello, everyone. We're coming to you live stream from St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York, America's Parish Church. We celebrate today, Monday of the seventh week of Easter. The celebrant for today's Mass is Monsignor Lamort, who is the Vicar General of the Archdiocese of New York. The Mass today is offered for the intentions of Elizabeth de la Torres. And later today, we'll celebrate Mass for Anne-Marie Russolo, Agnes Mulligan, and the deceased members of our armed forces. The opening hymn is the Strife is Or, number 787. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral. I offer the welcome again, as did Monsignor Ritchie. Uh, we welcome uh, no one here in this building. We're still under quarantine, but of course there are many who watch us on the live stream at stpatrickscathedral.org those who are listening on the Catholic Channel on Sirius XM Satellite Radio 129, and those who are watching later today on the Catholic Faith Network. We are united in prayer, all of us, over great distances across the country. And so we take a moment on this day that we celebrate not only the feasts of the saints we honor, but also for America's dead, um, Memorial Day. Uh, we offer our prayers now asking God in his goodness to forgive all of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God of peace, who are peace itself, and whom a spirit of discord cannot grasp, nor a violent mind receive, grant that those who are one in heart may persevere in what is good, and that those in conflict may forget evil and so be healed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled to the interior of the country and down to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? 
They answered him, We have never even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. He said, How were you baptized? They replied, With the baptism of John. Paul then said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 men. He entered the synagogue and for three months debated boldly with persuasive arguments about the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. God arises, his enemies, I'm sorry, sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing, sing to, to God, God, O kingdoms, kingdoms of, the, of earth. the earth. God arises, his enemies are scattered, and those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so are they driven as wax melts before the fire. Sing, Sing to, God, to God, O kingdoms of the earth. But the just rejoice and exult before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God, chant praise to his name, whose name is the Lord. Sing, Sing to, God, to God, O kingdoms of the earth. The father of orphans and the defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken, he leads forth prisoners to prosperity. Sing, Sing to, to God, God, O kingdoms, kingdoms of the earth. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The disciples said to Jesus, now you are talking plainly and not in any figure of speech. Now we realize that you know everything and that you do not need to have anyone question you. Because of this, we believe that you came from God Jesus answered them, Do you believe now? Behold, the hour is coming and has arrived when each of you will be scattered to his own home and you will leave me alone. But I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told this to you so that you might have peace in me. In the world you will have trouble but take courage, I have conquered the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think it's so significant for us as we spend these days between the Feast of the Ascension and next Sunday's Feast of Pentecost that the first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, from which we've been reading since Easter Sunday, uh, makes a very strong and powerful reference to the Holy Spirit. The reference, of course, in this way. The disciples, when questioned about their knowledge of the Holy Spirit, replied, we've never even heard of the Holy Spirit. I think for a time in our church, that was a very common understanding. Who is the Holy Spirit? We had such great familiarity with God the Father, the Creator, the one who gave us life, 
And of course, we associate so closely with the Son of God, Jesus, the Redeemer, our brother, who brought us new life and salvation. But who is the Holy Spirit? My recollection as a boy was that the Holy Spirit was coming to me on the day of my confirmation. But who was the Holy Spirit? When I was a kid growing up, it was the Holy Ghost. So we had no reference at all to the Spirit of God. And I think over time, from those days when I was a young boy to this time now, the Holy Spirit has become a driving force. Uh, not, not that the Holy Spirit wasn't there, but a realization of the driving force, not only within the church, but in our lives as well. That we know the power of the Holy Spirit to give us the wisdom that we need and the inspiration that we need, sometimes to go out and make some very, very difficult decisions. Between Thursday and Sunday in this nine-day period, we, the church, spend some time praying again for the coming of the Holy Spirit into our lives so that when we reach the Feast of Pentecost on Sunday, we too, like Mary and the disciples, will have a greater appreciation, but certainly a greater indwelling of the Spirit in our lives. My brothers and sisters, as followers of Jesus, being tested every day, we turn to God in faith with our prayers of petition. That all in the church may be open to and receive the gifts offered by the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. That all men and women in the world may remain strong in their pursuit of the common good and the good of their neighbor, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are afraid to take the next step in discipleship, that they will find courage in the message of Jesus and the hope of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. For this gathering of God's people, that we will find in the gospel a message of hope and strength in the midst of all of life's trials, let us pray to the Lord. And for all those who have died, especially the men and women of our country who have paid the ultimate price and have lost their lives to maintain our freedom, that they will receive the glory of Jesus and the reward of new life, let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, our Father, grant us the grace to entrust all of our needs to you, that we might one day share in the glory of your Son who conquered sin and death, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the saving sacrifice of your Son, the King of Peace, offered under sacramental signs that signify peace and unity, strengthen, we pray, O Lord, conquered among all your children. Through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is This is the Feast, number 794. For those who are not able to receive Holy Communion sacramentally this morning, please join me in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Bestow on us, we pray, O Lord, the spirit of charity so that sustained by the body and blood of your only begotten Son, we may be effective in nurturing among all the peace that he has left us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
The closing hymn is America the Beautiful, number 432. Thank you. 